So, I hate doing these videos because every time I do them, I get so distracted by looking at myself, which I shouldn't. Because you would think that only really attractive people get a, get like you know distracted by looking at themselves in the mirror and everything. You don't really think about like people who who you think are ugly or unattractive walking down the street and getting distracted by their looks. But it happens. I'm just telling you that I can't stop like looking at myself because I'm looking at my hair right now and thinking about how disgusting it looks. Like, dude, it's so long and disgusting. Look, look at this thing. Look at all this fucking hair I have, and it's so gross. And I haven't fucking showered today. And it looks like I got a fucking mushroom on my head. But look at this shit. You guys ready? Look. Look how long this shit is, man. It's fucking dumb. Look at that. Look at that. Look how long that is. It's fucking dumb. Anyways, I'm growing my hair out. I know. I know. Um, but I need to um, fill you guys in on what you've missed because uh, I don't feel like typing. Because I've been typing all day. And... Um, I've been working on a lot of stuff because, you know, I have my little book coming out, right? I've got my little book. If you guys didn't know, um, I've got a little book, and it's a collection of a bunch of stories from a bunch of awesome people and awesome um, writers who've submitted these stories. And um, there used to be a shelf right here. Let me see that. Do you know why there's no shelf there anymore? Hmm. Let me tell you, because um, last Thursday, um, Dave Cronin came over to my apartment, and we're sitting here, and we're doing all the things that we do on Thursday, and um, of course, Cronin has to talk on the phone, because he's always got to commit like an hour of a Thursday to be talking on the phone to somebody, like it's 1994, and this motherfucker goes, oh, I'm going to go in your room and be all sensitive artist. So he comes in my room, right? Dude, I look so old right now, man. I need to shave, get a little Botox. What if I got Botox? Would you guys think less of me? Anywho, so um, he comes in here and he's like, you know, sitting in here and then all of a sudden I hear a crash and he's like, dude, I broke your room. Now here's the thing. My room flooded, right? So my room was like, you know, I had water all over it. I lost a bunch of shit and I finally cleaned everything, kind of got most of the moisture out of here and all that kind of shit, fixed everything and started putting my room back together and then um, put up this awesome little shelf, right? There used to be a shelf right here. Wait, wait where is it? Right here. It used to be a little shelf, right? And I had like cool little things on there, little frame things and everything. I thought I was all cool looking and everything. And what happens? Dave Cronin comes in here and leans his fucking arm on the shelf in the wall and rips it out of the wall and it falls. And... um. He's like, I broke your room. So, cool. Thanks, Cronin. Um, anywho, um, so I have this book coming out, right? Fill you in. It's funny because um, I'm super fucking stoked on it. And me and Fruity were hanging out today, and we were sitting in the living room right over there. And he's like, dude, what's your favorite story? And um, honestly, like, I... There's different, sto there's different favorite stories that I have for different reasons. And um, I told him that there's... Um, it's like a third of the book is like kind of like humorous you know kind of funny whatever um and then another third of it is kind of like introspective and like kind of like kind of leaves you with a oh kind of thing you know and then the last third of it is fucking bum out city dude it's fucking empire strikes back you know when the fucking Luke's got missing his hand and shit, and he's got beat up and they're on the fucking millennium fucking all bummed out rolling out of fucking cloud city and shit that's what it is, and that's how I'm ending it, but, um, I suppose I shouldn't tell you that already, right, anyway, um, but yeah, some of them are fucking serious, it's not bad bum out, it's like good bum out, it's like the kind of shit that you, it's cool, because I got the opportunity to, um, ask a lot of the people that I either respect or think that they can st tell stories well or write really well, and, um, to put these stories together, and it's funny, because we all have these little stories, and, um, about our lives, and um, you'd really be surprised at what people want to write. People that I thought were going to be funny wrote re really introspective things, and people that I thought were going to write really introspective things wrote kind of like um, humorous things. It was really strange. It was really strange. But um, I'm really glad uh, that I asked who I asked, and I'm, I think this thing is fucking amazing. I'm so unbelievably stoked on this. And I can, I can say that because it's not... I have one story in the book. I do have, I have a new story in the book. Which I'm actually really stoked on, actually. and um, But some of the other stories just, I feel like, blow mine out of the water. And um, at first I was a little bummed out, because like, some of the stories, I'm like, oh man, how am I going to have to fucking be in the same book as this story? But 
uh, dude, I'm I'm so stoked. It just motivates me to write better and whatever. Um, but I did write an introduction to the book today, and um, I'm really stoked. Well, I'm, I don't know if I'm stoked on it yet. It's still my first draft, but maybe I'll read it. Okay, I'll read it. Um, it's, maybe I shouldn't. Because if I do, then you guys are going to be like, oh, I already read that shit. I don't want to buy the book, blah, blah, blah. I don't care if Chris gets to eat today. Um, Because a lot of you guys don't. A lot of you guys don't give a shit if I eat. You're like, I'm going to come here and just look at your stupid pictures and look at your stupid video. And I don't care about your book. Um, I'm going to download your CD from fucking LimeWire. um, Because I know you do, motherfucker. Because somebody told me that once. They're like, oh, I downloaded your shit from a torrent the other day. I'm like, oh, cool. Thanks. Whatever. I don't care. Whatever. I fucking download shit. I suppose I shouldn't admit to that. Whatever. (sighs) All right. This is the introduction of my book. It starts with a quote, and the quote is, it's not about the story, it's how you paint the picture. I was fascinated the way she pulled the round brush through her long brown hair. Her head tilted back and to the right, mouth slightly open, looking down her nose into the mirror. The slight pulls and tugs, the long strokes. I watched as she alternated between light mists and quick bursts of hairspray. Why are you watching me? I don't know. And the truth was I didn't. I was 14 and everything she did captivated me. She was so interesting down to her everyday mundane movements. I could watch as she pulled her hair back and looped a rubber band two, three, four times around a ponytail. Well, why four? Why not five or six? As a teenager with an uncanny curiosity for the lives of others, I wanted nothing more than to burrow into her head and understand why she chewed peach-flavored gum when it wasn't even her favorite flavor and why she got so excited to make me french fries in that old fried daddy cooker on the counter. As the years progressed, I found myself exclusively reading biographies, watching documentaries, and spending the last of my euros watching people have sex behind glass in the red light district of Amsterdam. True story. But it went far beyond the act of voyeurism. I began interviewing bands as an excuse to ask questions I had from years of obsession, none of which I ever had any intention to publish, and nor did I. I took notes on cocktail napkins in Vegas strip clubs while performing impromptu interviews with escorts. I asked CEOs of corporations what motivated them to get out of bed and watch silently as heroin addicts pushed the cooked-up liquid into their veins. If ever challenged why I was so inquisitive, I would immediately respond with, Everyone is a resource, and you can gain insight from every person you meet. While true, it was more of an excuse to satisfy my teenage compulsion to understand why people moved, thought, reacted, and motivated them in this world. The following stories are an extension of that voyeuristic obsession. It was my opportunity to ask some of the most interesting characters I knew to give me a peek into their lives. The only guideline given was that their story had to be true. An experiment in giving people from different countries, generations, and lifestyles brushes and colors to see what art they create. These are my friends my colleagues, my mentors, and my inspiration. I hope this collection will motivate, provoke, and entertain you in the ways that they have inspired me. Christopher Gutierrez, June 2009.